1977, this phenomenon known as punk rock was sweeping across the United States. From New York to L.A., bands with a DIY ethic were putting out their own records, booking their own gigs, and promoting themselves, proving by action and creating a truly unique rebellion against the major record companies, promoters, and mainstream Top 40 radio. Small scenes were cropping up in every major metropolitan area of the United States, and down here in Texas, it was no different. Houston engraved its significance on this movement with bands like The Legionnaire's Disease, Really Red, and The Hates. For over 25 years now, Kristen Artheider has been leading The Hates through a remarkable journey of over 10 albums and still continues to this day. In 1996, Kristen told the Houston Press, I used to have to go into some little mom and pop record store and buy a fanzine to read about punk. Now you can go into a bookstore and see Green Day on the cover of Rolling Stone. Punk being on the cover of something, anything, I think it's great. And I tell you what, it was a great honor to interview a truly legendary Texas punk rock artist in the record store. Great pleasure to have you in Third Score Records, sir. Thank you. And uh, I really appreciate your time. Uh, I guess right off the bat, what I'd like to ask you is, uh, do you feel that stores like this are always going to be relevant to musicians? Oh, yeah. It's just uh, the kind of music that even is in here is probably not available. I think it's, it's definitely a growing niche at the end. Yeah. I'm, I'm shocked how there's some people that just want vinyl. Yeah. But I think, I just think there's more even just the type of music you have here. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think someone wants to especially have something in their neighborhood to just come down and be able to look do something. Sometimes that's the best way. You just got to start going through the bins and right. something. Sometimes it's more like maybe you're looking at but more it's like hit and miss, kind of like finding something you didn't think about or something you didn't think you were going to come across. Right. Something you've forgotten about. Yeah, exactly. Or being surprised, you know, maybe someone comes in and goes, hey, look what just came in today. <laughs> Absolutely. Another question is like, okay, you may not be familiar with the Texas music, but the Hates has been around since 1977, correct? That's correct. And uh, your first album, obviously, was a record. So it was a four-song EP. Four-song EP. Seven-inch vinyl. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was probably obviously available in a store like this, probably, at the time, correct? Exactly. And uh, now today, for, for, for kids today, you know, that say they may not even be aware that they can put out a 7-inch. Because that happens a lot. Kids will come in here and, you know, they, they discover that vinyl's alive. You know, there's kids that have grown up in the digital age not even being aware that people still can Number one, that was the only meeting we had back then. I think some people gotta remember there wasn't there wasn't the internet, there wasn't MP3s. It's basically you thought about if you're gonna get something out, you made a record and what was more there was a lot of college radio stations back then. If we made a record we could send it to them, they'd give us airplay and we'd get a chart back that week or several weeks later showing where we had list made a listing on there. What was also neat was uh, there was some really cool fanzines around the country or even around the world that would review it. So that would stir up an interest where you could get people to buy it. And there would be uh, some record stores you'd want to get them out to. Like we would send it out to Bob out in Los Angeles, out in California. I can't think where exact city they're at. And I think one thing that got kind of killed by the antitrust laws and the big record companies was there was there was uh, people that would take to pick it up, like Jim Distribution and Systematic in Berkeley. Mm -hmm. And that was a good source of uh, getting it to distribute. What was really neat was some people would actually let me know where the record was going. I had someone tell me, yeah, I'll, so many copies went to London, so many copies went to Japan, so many copies went to Grand Mark, et cetera, stuff like that. That is really cool. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's just, what's really neat is the record's a lot more tangible, and it kind of gives you something were um, it seems to even this is maybe this is just my opinion, but to me it even sounds different. 
definitely. I do agree with that. I'm not trying to be a purist about this little stuff on record. Right. But it just seems that it kind of even reflects even punk rock getting it on a record. Yeah. I, I, I completely agree. Okay. One, two, ready, go! Stop! 